The story begins hundreds of years ago when we humans were the weakest race and we couldn't even protect ourselves from small animals. At the time, humans, in addition to being weak and anti-violence, used to be members of animal protection NGOs and were obviously also against guns, being the most failed creatures on the entire planet. Everything changed when, one day, they ended up discovering a race of people with superhuman strength who were so strong that they began to collectively call them nobles. At first, these nobles were suspicious of humans, but they soon realized the size of the weakness that each human carried in the middle of their butts, and this combined with the fact that humans gave these nobles an immense respect made the nobles acquire the philosophy that they should protect humans, creating a kind of obligatory nobility. Obliging every noble is to protect a human being at any cost. In this way, the nobles and the humans formed a very special bond, in which the nobles were clearly above the mortal humans, but they still had respect and admiration for all humans. Today, living very short lives, their civilization was always evolving, and more than 800 years ago, the cards and Rama of Heisel, affectionately nicknamed Hai, was the highest noble being in this world titled the chief of the nobles. He fell asleep and only woke up after someone took him out of his coffin. Upon waking, he was shocked to see how different this world had become, as technology had advanced so much and everywhere he went he witnessed incredible human creations. But before he walked alone into this world, he met his servant, Frank. He was surprised to see his master and immediately took him inside his house to tell him what had been happening in the world recently. Hai finds it very funny how much the human world has changed and wants to experience it all firsthand. And Frank is currently the principal of a high school, and he enrolls High in one of his classes so that he can spend some time with modern humans and understand the developments that he has not seen in recent years. High quickly makes a friend, a red-haired boy named Shin, who is a great martial artist and an excellent athlete. High is surprised by the casual way humans manage to address him, realizing that humans seem to have lost the instinct to recognize nobles, which makes him believe that humans should no longer rely too much on them. One night, while he was having tea with Frank, this piece of shit, unknown to the guy next to them, introduces himself as M21. The guy has no name. He says he's a modified human and that he was created by an evil scientific organization called the Union. Yeah man, the sugar you eat. And according to him, they were created in test groups, that's why they were never given a name, and were only referred to by their serial numbers. They all had numerous drugs injected into their orifices, and many tests were done on their bodies, all of this to test the effect of the drugs. At the time, the conditions they were subjected to were so horrible for them that all of their friends ended up dying during one part of the process, except for him and one friend of his who survived and gained superhuman strength strength and abilities. Have you always wanted to draw your favorite anime characters but think you don't have the talent? Here on our channel we have the perfect solution for you. We've formed an exclusive partnership to teach you all how to draw anime quickly and easily. Even if you think you don't have the talent for it, you will learn from Noah Williams, one of the greatest experts in the world of anime. Drawing anime has never been so simple, and it doesn't matter if you are a beginner or already have some experience. From the first class you will see the results, you will learn very quickly. The link will be in the video description, and only you can access and learn today. He says, that currently several occult organizations try to control the power of the world, using him and other modified people as weapons of destruction, but finally he managed to escape from the Union with his friend, and after that they decided to go their separate ways to find a purpose for their lives. After learning about his abilities and how he ended up saving the lives of some students at the school, Principal Frank decided to invite M21 to live in his house for the time being. He suggested that M21 work for him, as more people are being sent to kill him, and they could help him deal with these people. A man thinks for a moment and asks what Frank is trading, however the blonde-haired man laughs. He says that from now on, M21 will only have to act as school security and eat the drugstore of students who try to do something wrong. The next day, the angry guy goes to school and immediately catches the attention of a horde of girls who are enchanted by his majestic behavior and elegance. It's as if the women somehow manage to feel that he is a nobleman. That's why I made this beautiful one for this video, look how beautiful. He walks into the classroom and notices that Shin has a broken hand and is wearing a cast that his friends have scribbled on. So the hiker gets involved in this strange human custom custom, takes his marker and scribbles on Shin's cast. He then sits down and starts attending classes with them, and even has lunch with the boys, where he insists on eating mud every day, because ever since he tasted this modern delicacy he can't go back to the food of his time. After class ended, Shin and his friend, a real nerd, started talking about mobile games, and asked Heiss if he would like to join. However, Heiss has no idea what they are talking about. Mobile video games, Heiss knows nothing about that, so Shin and the loser explain to him that a mobile phone is a very important tool in modern times, because when you have a mobile phone you can connect with many people at any time, saying that a mobile phone is a device that prevents a person from getting bored. I can't believe that such a thing exists and during the night he goes to Frank who was relaxing on top of the school with M21. He tells Frank about the technology Shin was talking about and Frank smiles at him. He says that the world has changed a lot since he went to sleep and that many technologies like this exist now. Frank prepares the latest and highest spec version of a smartphone for Hai, the Ultra Noble 9199 Plus Vampire Cell Phone. And the next day, when Hai picks up his phone in class, 
class, Shin and his friend are surprised to see him using a device and are happy for him. They say that when the evening comes, he can research more about single mothers within 5 kilometers. However, they soon realize that Hai has no idea how to use a phone. After all, when Shin asks for his number via email, Hai just stares at him blankly. The loser friend takes the phone from Hai's hand and begins to teach him how to use it. He also tells him how to send an email, which Hai learns immediately and begins sending messages to Frank. While eating lunch that day, the trio heard a noise coming from the schoolyard and like good gossips, they decided to check out what was going on. They saw that a group of vandals had driven onto the school property and were harassing the students. Hai was very intrigued by this, as he had never seen humans fighting each other in his life. One of the vandals grabbed the janitor and he threw a punch, but Shin ran and blocked the punch with his injured hand. The man glared at Shin and accused him of trying to steal his girlfriend. The loser asked Shin why he did it. In his defense, Shin said that the woman was just about to fall and he saved her. But if the girl is a stray dog who has a boyfriend and still falls in love with him, he is not to blame for that alone. The man, however, has no intention of listening to him and his henchmen start bullying people at school. Shin tells them to leave or he will shit in his own hand and punch them in the face. But before he can do that, the leader of these vandals starts punching him. Shin dodges most of the punches, but he is cornered and cannot retreat and ends up being hit directly in the face by one of his punches. Hai observes all the commotion and looks at M21, who really wants to put a stop to all of this, but he is afraid to reveal his strength over the human, revealing that he is trying to be discreet, since the correct thing in a normal situation between humans would be to call the police. However, the horned man starts kicking Shin and even tries to step on his head, but Shin rolls to the side and the horned man tries to deal another punch, but Shin dodges all of his punches and in a moment of opening he lands a punch on his enemy. The leader of the vandals gets even more angry and starts throwing strong punches, and while Shin tries to block them with his wound, his gesture begins to loosen and the horned man punches him in the stomach, throwing him on top of the loser, and with both of them fallen on the ground, the horned man advances towards Shin, saying that he will shit in his face, but he is blocked by the janitor, who he tells to go away, as he will not allow him to shit in his students' faces. But the horned one doesn't give a damn, and grabs the janitor by the neck, however he is interrupted by M21, who went to them, calming his mind, ordering them to let go of the janitor. The horned one looks at him, and tells him to go away, if he doesn't want to take shit in his face, saying once again that he wouldn't stop until he shit in Shin's mouth. In response, M21 responds once again, telling him to leave the belt on him alone, so the horned man releases the janitor, and tries his luck with M21. However, M21 uses completely inhuman movements, easily dodging each punch, to then grab his chain and slam his head against the ground. The horned man tries in every way to get up, but he realizes that M21 is very strong, M21 does not stop there, and then tells this horned man not to show up at this school again, otherwise he and his entire gang of little boys would be personally killed by him. This scares the man, who immediately runs away, with his entire gang. In the end, all the students scream, celebrating M21's victory, and he is very surprised by this, as he is used to being bullied, tortured, and not to being appreciated as a hero. Hike was watching everything, he simply goes back inside to continue his business, reflecting on how interesting it would be to see humans shitting on each other. At least now he realized that humans have become dangerous, strong and brave compared to the beautiful times. The next day begins, and as usual, Chin arrives late to class, the teacher this time enters with two new students by his side, he has no information about the students, he only knows that they are both very handsome. The short boy with slick back hair introduces himself as Rests, while the pretty girl introduces herself as Syrah. At this point the teacher makes a good move, and tells Chin to show Syrah around the school, which he pretends not to be too keen on. Looking at both of them, Hike immediately realizes that they are nobles, and in response the two new students are able to notice Hike's exceptionally strong hour, which is too strong even for a lord of nobles. His aura for both of them is as if they were watching the time of a god. After the whole class, they sit down to lunch, and as time passes, Chin realizes that these two new students seem to be inept at some modern things, just like Hike. Regis tries to use a chopstick but fails, while Syra simply uses a spoon, proving that in addition to being weak nobles, they are also stupid for not having learned anything with the advancement of human technology. Later that day we see Chin, Loser, Regis and Syra, and Hike returning to Frank's house where they were hanging out. When Frank walked in with M21, he was surprised and annoyed to see Chin and his friend dirtying his house, but he knows they are Hike's friends, so he tells them they are welcome, and goes into the kitchen to simply wash the dishes, like a good housewife. When he returns outside, Chin tells him that neither Syra nor Regis have a place to live in the city, and asks Frank if he can take them in. Frank gets angry with him again, but Hike says he doesn't care, which forces Frank to say that he doesn't care either. The next day a group of thugs decide to pick a fight with Hike and Chin, along with Loser and Syra, even though they just wanted to go back to their homes in peace. The enemies surround them in a group, and one of them even pulls a knife on Hike, but Chin tells them not to hurt any of his friends, and that he will go with them. Then they are all taken to the gang's hideouts, where they are surrounded by a group of vandals, and the boss looks at Chin, and he says that he will learn a lesson today. The Chin tells the Loser to pick up the snare and Hike to step aside, while he throws his bag and prepares to fight. One of the guys runs towards him with a group, but the Chin easily
easily dodges his groin, as well as dodging an attack from behind and punching him to the ground. The other guy tries to hit him with a wooden stick, but the chin easily dodges it and he need him in the face. But two men try to attack him, but he manages to easily dodge the attacks and gives a strong counterattack. Unfortunately, while he was being cursed by several of them, Chin ends up being caught from behind by one of the enemies, while another enemy tries to hit him and Chin manages to defend himself, but again a guy tries to choke him from behind, causing a raider to step forward to save him, but Chin screams for him to move away and uses his skills to push the big guy away. He was being pressured and was about to be overpowered when M21 and Hedge arrive at the scene. Hedge tries to interfere, but M21 stops him, as it wouldn't be nice if Hedge showed his power to normal humans. Hedge looks at Chin and realizes that he is not giving up, even though he is facing several humans. In fact, he continued to strive to beat all the enemies. Hedge is shocked to see a human defending himself from the people around him, as doing so was the noble's job, but M21 tells him that humans have learned to defend themselves. Out of nowhere, one of the enemies tries to use the loser as a hostage, but Chin kicks him before he can reach the loser, and the situation gets worse when the leader of the sissies gets tired of everything and pulls out a gun, pointing it at Chin. It was at that moment that M21 decided to intervene, appearing in front of the leader, grabbing his hand and pushing him to the ground. Then, another extra tries to use a steel pipe to hit him, but M21 simply uses his arm to defend himself from the steel pipe. And right after, the furious Chin tries to punch the guy with all his strength in the face, but he stops at the exact moment when M21 says that all this is enough. The Chin then walks away and tells these men that if they want revenge on him, they should attack him when he is alone. After he says this, everyone starts walking back home, and Regis comments on the fact that humans have become very savage in recent years, to which he responds by saying that he has yet to see what kind of savage and heartless acts humans are capable of. On another beautiful day, everyone sits down and has dinner, while Regis and M21 exchange insults with each other. As usual, Regis says he hates the fact that M21 gave up his humanity to gain superhuman powers, while M21 is forced to hate Regis for calling him a traitor to humanity, even though he was literally created in a laboratory. The two are interrupted by Frank, however he is fed up with these freeloaders and tells them to clean up the mess they created. The cow, proving that she is a true angel in a noblewoman's body, begins to clean things up, while Regis argues with Frank while cleaning, asking why Rai doesn't clean anything. Frank quickly ignores him and tries to change the subject, but the pygmy with the licked head insists and says that Rai should also clean things up, and before Frank could rip Regis' head off, Rai simply got up and walked over to him. Frank was terrified at that moment, thinking that Rai was going to destroy the entire neighborhood, but to his surprise he simply walked over to put his empty containers in the trash and walked away. Frank let out a sigh of relief and started cleaning everything up, happy that the city had been spared. The next day at school, Frank and Rai call an M21 into a private room, and Frank informs him that he has opened a separate bank account for M21. He is surprised and asks why he would do that, and Frank looks at him and says that he is working for them, so obviously he needs a bank account so they can send him his salary. This leaves M21 completely shocked, as before this he was simply used as a weapon and received nothing throughout his life. This is the first time someone has offered to pay him a salary. He thanks Frank wholeheartedly and returns to his work, ready to give the bum to anyone who does shit. And when he was walking home at night, he was stopped by two men. One of them is an extremely ugly looking guy, while the other is fat and to make the judge look fat, he is eating a chicken leg. The guy, ugly as hell, tells M21 that they have business with him and calls him by his code name, which is the only one he has. This immediately puts him off guard, as no one outside of the union or the union knows his code name. He asks who these assholes are, and one introduces himself as the shark and the other as the hammer. But to make this video easier, I'm just going to call the fat guy fat, because he's the only fat guy in this entire video. After the question, the shark reveals that they work for D5, which he immediately recognizes as the union special operations team, and he goes there and asks them why they are in front of him, to which the shark guy replied that they were going to take him with them, and during this simple conversation they end up insulting M21's only living companion. He gets furious, and immediately the shark realizes this and ends up provoking him even more, saying that the truth hurt him a lot. M21 then transforms into his own flight on top of Deadpool, and runs towards the shark to try to hit him, but the shark is too fast, and dodges all of his attacks, and then he kicks him in the stomach. Luckily, M21 didn't eat dinner. He then steps on his chest and tells him that he is just a useless science experiment that should have been discarded. M21 transforms again to fly towards him in Rio Attica, but the shark jumps back just in time. M21 repositions himself, but the shark doesn't give him time to catch his breath and attacks him with a knife, and M21 narrowly blocks the first attack, but the shark keeps attacking him, making M21's life increasingly difficult. He realizes that the shark is much stronger than him, and that if this continues he will have no chance of surviving this fight. The shark finally manages to break through his defense and cuts him on the shoulders, on the legs, and then he applies a special attack, which gives him numerous cuts on his body, breaking him open completely. He retreats and falls to his knees, trying to catch his breath, while the fat man calls from behind, telling the shark not to kill him. However, the shark starts to advance, but he stops when he sees the 
the girl and Regis behind M21. He looks back and is shocked to see the two. He tells the two to leave immediately. Regis however is confident in his abilities and starts to badmouth the shark who does not understand the boy's jokes and tries to attack him but M21 appears between them and saves Regis. Regis, however, still doesn't care and starts talking again but this time M21 yells telling him to shut up which surprises him. The shark advances but is stopped halfway when the man stands behind M21 telling him to stop. He looks back and realizes that this guy is the leader of DEA 5 and soon after this man says that M21 will go with them and he agrees without any resistance saying that his only condition is that they leave Regis and Syrah alone. After that Regis and Syrah return to Frank's house. They then ask where M21 is and Regis simply doesn't say anything because he was very angry with M21 for having prevented him from fighting them. Frank asks Syrah what happened and she informs him that they were returning when they saw M21 with two people she doesn't know. They seem to be fighting but in the end M21 voluntarily returned with them. Frank thanks her for the information and thinks about what could have happened. He knows that the people Syrah is talking about must be members of the so-called union or syndicate. There are many names and Frank does not know any of them. However Frank also does not know if M21 went with them to save Regis and Syrah or if he was actually a spy sent to obtain information about Rai. And now that he has obtained information he returns. Meanwhile M21 is taken to a house where he is beaten by the shark who wants to obtain information from him. However Krantz tells him to stop and asks M21 to tell them what happened to the coffin he was tasked with recovering. When he refuses to answer Krantz asks if he received orders from the union to keep quiet. This makes M21 realize that they don't seem to know that he betrayed the syndicate and frees the nobleman from the coffin. The shark starts kicking him again saying that his mission for the syndicate doesn't matter at the moment as DA5's mission takes priority and M21 realizing that he could use this situation to his advantage decides to turn them against the syndicate. He tells him that he will only give them information if they are willing to make a deal and Krantz looks at him and says that he is in no position to negotiate. If he wants he can simply use the truth serum created by the syndicate on him. But M21 smiles at him. He says that the truth serum does not work on him and that he will die before they get any information they want. He says that their only way out is to make a deal with him and Krantz asks what he wants and M21 responds by saying that he needs information about all his comrades who died. Krantz, however, cannot make this deal because he himself has no information about them. But M21 says that he knows that one of the members of DA5 is a powerful hacker who can find out anything. He knows that hacking the union system must be child's play for the hacker. The hacker named So Anso smiles and says that he is completely right. Krantz tells him that they have a deal. He asks about the information but M21 says that he is hungry, that he wants to eat first, trying to buy as much time as possible. So the shark and the fat man are in charge of taking care of him and he is very well taken care of, especially by the shark who starts hitting him asking for information right away. However M21 tells him that he will only provide any information after receiving his part of the deal. The shark gets furious with him and pulls out a knife and threatening M21. He says that if he is lying he will kill him but M21 says that he will be going against Krantz's direct orders and will lose all the information they could have obtained from him. At that moment a man with long hair arrives with the guy and tells the shark to back off and the shark takes out his frustration on his teammate saying that his hair stinks of shit and then he reprimands the guy with long hair named Taquil complaining that he left women and children alive when his job was to completely clean a certain area but Taquil replied that those people could not harm them and that was why he let them live but the shark reveals that after Taquil left he killed those people anyway and this infuriates Taquil who draws his gun and points it at the shark but the shark quickly jumps and grabs his arm telling him not to do anything stupid the shark simply passes by him saying that he will get the information from M21 one way or another on the other side of the screen Regis is walking back to school with the loser Chinese guy when suddenly he sees the shark and the fat guy in the distance in a building at that moment Shin turns to talk to him but Regis completely disappears and finds the fat guy and the shark in an abandoned park the shark comments on Regis courage and says that he is extremely stupid but in return Regis says that his mother must be so fat that she gave birth to a child with the shark face which makes the shark throw his knife at Regis Regis easily grabs the air and tells the shark that a weakling like him can't do anything the furious shark runs towards him and tries to attack him with his knives but Regis manages to easily dodge his attacks and suddenly he uses an ability that makes his entire body freeze. Regis tries to land a direct hit but the shark easily blocks it resulting in only a scratch on his face. He tries to attack him again but Regis uses a time stop again before trying to hit him but this time the shark also manages to dodge the attack saving its vital points. The two fight again but the fat guy throws a bunch of small explosives that force the two to retreat. He throws a pill at the shark and tells it not to go easy on that sucky hair. Even though it's reluctant the shark puts the pill in its mouth and suddenly its muscles start to grow and its aura changes completely its speed becomes absolutely fast and in the blink of an eye it appears behind Regis and tries to attack him but Regis jumps back but the shark appears behind him again and it dodges when Regis tries to punch it. He then tries to throw a knife at Regis which is 
easily blocked and Regis tries to use his special ability again but it doesn't work this time. The shark then laughs at him and says that his trick won't work anymore and this makes Regis furious and before he could react the shark took a blow which made him scream in pain. At that moment he realizes how powerful Regis is he could have easily died with that blow but Regis avoided killing him and unfortunately this fight will not be able to be won by Regis because the fat man has Shin and the loser as hostages. The fat man orders Regis to come with them in silence and that is how Regis is also captured by them. After that, in the place where M21 was, he is taken to a different room where he sees Regis, Shin, and the loser lying on the floor. The shark tells M21 that if he doesn't open his little mouth he will kill them. And meanwhile at Frank's house, Syra approached him and hi, and informed them that something happened to Regis. Syra explains that she and Regis have a very strong neural connection, and because of this, they can both feel each other, and according to her, this connection is only lost when one of them is unconscious or dies, which means that Regis is unconscious or dead at the moment. She thanks them for their hospitality, and says that she will leave to look for Regis. At this point, Frank tells Hai that Shin sent the email, saying that he and his loser friend would visit them, but they haven't shown up yet, and aren't even answering calls, which prompts Hai to get up, and he and Frank start following Syrah. Back at the hideout, Regis finally wakes up and finds himself surrounded by members of DEA Faction 5. It is at this point that the shark tells M21 to reveal any information he has while holding a knife to Regis' throat, but M21 turns his face away, saying that Regis is just an insufferable brat who he doesn't care about, and that they are free to do whatever they want. However, Regis has a very sharp tongue and starts insulting the shark, which results in him being swiftly kicked in the face. Shin also wakes up and is shocked to find himself surrounded by these men, but his attention immediately turns to his unconscious loser friend. He tries to wake him up, and when he wakes him up, Shin looks around and sees Regis being mistreated and M21 is also there. He asks M21 what is going on, but he doesn't answer. Regis, however, butts in saying that M21 traded his humanity for power, so they can't expect much from him. He and the loser are very confused by this and try to talk to M21, but he refuses to answer. The shark then grabs Shin and holds a knife to his throat, trying to get an answer from M21, but he refuses, claiming that he only knows the boys as random high school students who attend the school where he was placed as a security guard. The shark becomes enraged by this and kicks Shin to the ground, and then begins to step on his head, and a while later it is revealed that all the people who saw their faces will have to die. However, Tal tells him that they can simply use some drug or another to be able to erase their memories, but Crunch intervenes, saying that the children will have to die, causing both of them to shut up. The shark is happy to hear this and pushes the shark towards the loser, telling him to kill him, but Shin grabs his leg and won't let go. He gets rid of Shin and decides to kill the loser, but Hedge gets in between them. However he is still attached to the special gem, which stops his powers, and the shark tells him to get out of his way, but Hedge, as usual, ends up cursing the shark's mother, cursing and angry again, which results in a big face on Hedge's face. He walks over to the boy again and grabs him by the hair, but before he can hurt him, Shin decides he's had enough and jumps in to attack the shark. And the shark, thinking that Shin is just another normal student, decides to simply punch him in the face, but Shin dodges the punch and lands another punch on his face. This causes the shark to knock Hedge to the ground and turn on Shin, grabbing him by the throat, saying that it will choke him to death. The loser immediately runs over to him and grabs his arm, trying to get him to let go and begging him not to kill him, but the shark doesn't care and continues to choke Shin, to the point where the boy's body goes limp and he becomes unconscious. Hedge can't do anything but watch because of his handcuffs, but suddenly M21 decides that enough is enough and runs at the shark, transforming back into Grandpa Hirin and cutting off his right arm, forcing him to let go of Shin and saving his life. Meanwhile, the shark has reached the hideout and walks towards the entrance, where she is blocked by the fat guy who asks her what her job is here with a very ugly smile. The cow calmly tells him to get out of the way, but the fat man realizes that she is one of those beings with special powers and immediately throws a bunch of bombs at her, and he smiles thinking that he hurt the cow and when the dust dissipates, he sees her silhouette and feels an intense pain in his torso. It is at this moment that he realizes that he has been cut off and he did not even realize this happening. He then decides that this is not a good place to fight and throws a few more bombs at her before disappearing. Ryan and Frank also follow her, but instead of going through the main entrance, they land on the roof. There they are greeted by the Takio who was just waiting for them to arrive. He asks why they are here, and Frank tells Rai to go ahead as he will deal with this ill-mannered child. With that said he manifests his power in his fists and goes to attack Takio. However, Takio should not be underestimated, as he carries a briefcase with multiple functions which he can use to defend himself and attack Frank. Frank mocks the thug's weapon of choice and creates a bunch of dark energy fragments and throws them all at him who again uses his briefcase as a shield. Frank decides to appeal even more and cuts the entire roof in two, however, when the dust dissipates, the thug shoots at him with a sniper, but Frank manages to easily dodge and runs towards him once more, but ends up being forced to retreat when the thug uses his shield to attack him. He tries again to use his dark energy, but the Takio manages to point his second hidden pistol at his head, trying to kill him. Frank dodges and the Takio pulls out two pistols and starts shooting at him, forcing Frank
Frank to just dodge. Frank quickly uses a very strong blow full of dark energy, but the Takio dodges and falls to the ground. He then realizes that if the fight continues like this, Frank will win. So he takes that damn pill and puts it in his mouth. Upon consuming it, he goes through a metamorphosis similar to his friends and changes color, thus committing cultural appropriation. Frank tries to attack him again, but before he can move an inch, the Takio simply jumps behind him and points a gun at his head. Meanwhile, M21 knows he won't be able to defeat the shark guy, but he'll do his best. His fight continues and the shark kicks M21 back and then swings his blade in the air, cutting M21's clothes and revealing his tuned body. The shark becomes insecure about his own body and decides to kill M21 once and for all. His M21 then continues, fighting only the shark safely, stabbing here and there, until the shark decides to use one of its strongest blows, already knowing that M21 will not get out of the way, because if he does, all those he tried to defend will die. M21 does exactly what he expected and takes most of the damage, which leaves him bloody and he falls to his knees. The shark walks towards him and tells him to give up, but he remembers that it says he's going to kill M21, so he raises his knife to end the fight. However, Regis manages to free himself from his handcuffs at that exact moment and appears in front of M21. He punches the shark in the stomach and throws him against the wall. Regis tells him to back off and prepares to fight him, and the shark immediately gets up and uses his pill, as he knows he is no match for Regis and his normal form. However Regis seems to be furious, as he doesn't care at all about his transformation, he just charges at the attacker and throws him away. The shark then attacks him and Regis goes to him to finish the job, but before he can deliver the final blow, Crunt interferes, making Regis fall backwards. He also puts in a pill and asks the shark if he can stand up. The shark gets up all happy, thinking that together with Crunt they will end this fight once and for all. But to everyone's surprise, Crunt gets his hands on the shark's body and trains it completely, becoming more powerful than he already was. Regis looks at him with disgust and uses his magic blast against him, but it doesn't work on Crunt, he's too strong. Which leaves Regis shocked, he immediately advances against Crunt, applying a magic punch to him, but Crunt dodges and crushes his head against the ground. Regis lies down on the ground, and Crunt, already fed up with everything, begins to move towards M21, but Regis says he's not done yet, and gets up once more to charge another magical blast at Crunt. His blow was much more powerful than the previous ones, making him gasp, but when the dust clears, he is horrified to see that Crunt is completely fine. He immediately runs towards Regis, he gives an uppercut so strong that he crashes into the ceiling and is knocked unconscious. He starts walking towards the M21 again, but there is a mysterious figure walking towards him. Meanwhile Crunt was with Taquil above the roof, and Taquil has Frank in his sights, and while he could have his head blown off, Frank was thinking about whether or not he should release his true powers. It turns out that Riley says not to release his real powers without his consent, but he also realizes that if he doesn't use his powers, he will lose this duel, but for him following his master's order is the most important thing. However Taquil ended up using the most wrong words at that moment, when telling Frank that after killing him, he will go after that idiot who got in there. This fills Frank with rage, causing him to release a frightening aura, which even begins to burn the weapon that Taquil had in his hands. He quickly moves away, confused by what was happening, and then Frank tells him that the biggest mistake he has made so far in his entire life was to speak ill of his high master, and by the time he controls his anger, he had already released his true powers, and now he blames Taquil for this. He says that he will also have to pay for this. At that moment a giant whirlwind of dark energy envelopes the sky, turning everything purple, and then with the speed of lightning, a spear made of dark energy through Taquil's body, pinning him to the ground. Frank then uses his mask energy to corrupt his weapon, but he throws it away in time to save himself, but Frank has several more spears against him, Taquil then runs to try to dodge, but one of them again hit him in the leg, making him fall to his knees, Frank walks towards him and mocks him for talking too much, being that he is very weak, this provokes Taquil and he tries to shoot Frank, but this only makes him receive another spear in his arm, Frank finally gets tired of playing around, and creates a bunch of magic spears in the air, and throws them at Taquil, however Taquil decides not to give up, he gets a boost and manages to dodge the spears, while pointing his gun at Frank and shooting at him, Frank however doesn't even move and lets the bullet get close to him, which completely takes away Taquil's hopes when he sees that his bullets, when they get close to Frank's face, lose their strength and fall to the ground. After that, Frank blows everything up and makes Taquil scream in pain. Even so, this little shit still resists and jumps on Frank, shooting him in the face. He doesn't cause any damage to Frank's life, but he manages to cause a single scratch on his face, leaving a small trail of blood on his face. Frank looks at Taquil and asks why he's still fighting so bravely, knowing that he has no chance of winning, but Taquil ignores him and runs towards him once more, and Frank fires a bunch of magic blades at him, blades that Taquil manages to dodge and appear behind Frank, pointing a gun at his head again, but Frank simply uses his magical energy to grab Taquil's entire body, taking the gun from his hand, and then he reveals his enormous power in another cloud of dark energy, which forms over them. He converts these clouds into countless spears and throws them all at Taquil, while keeping him in the middle of the place without leaving space for him to escape. Taquil is stabbed by the spears, and his powers are completely depleted, forcing him to revert to his normal state. The 
Syrah also arrives on the scene and watches as Frank goes towards the fallen Taquil, ready to end his suffering. But before he can kill him, Taquil looks at the Syrah and tells her that the children are in danger down there and that they must hurry to save them. He also asked her to convey his sincere apologies to the children who were taken hostage, and this sudden show of care for those they had captured caused Frank to reconsider his decision to kill him. The woman then goes back inside, and while walking upstairs, she ends up meeting the fat man who has taken the pill and is drugged, now holding an entire rocket launcher in his hands. He fires a projectile at her, but she simply deflects it with her hands, and then I summon Marma that comes directly from her soul, which is a scythe. The fat man fires a projectile at her again, but this time she responds using her scythe and splits the projectile in half, in addition to cutting the fat man into two fat pieces. On the main floor, the lightning enters the room and heads towards Kruntz, who is the leader of the enemies. The man looks at it and asks who it is, but the lightning responds by asking him who the hell gave it permission to speak. Kruntz is stunned by this answer, but before he can say anything, a sudden weight is felt in the air, and suddenly, both he and the other are pinned to the ground by an extraordinary amount of gravity, which is one of the many powers that the lightning has. Kruntz tries to move, but the lightning asks again if anyone gave it permission to move, causing the enemy to hit the ground face down without even touching it. Somehow, Kruntz manages to get up and land a midair strike that destroys the pillars behind the beam, but he himself remains unharmed. Kruntz draws his twin blades and prepares for a duel. He leaps towards the beam and attacks it with his blades, this being a very powerful attack, almost the entire area collapses, and now there is dust everywhere. Chinho and the others say, screw it, the lightning bolt is dead. However, as the dust clears, they realize that the lightning bolt simply managed to completely stop Krunt's attack by grabbing his hand, and then, simply saying the tensei word Chinha, he caused Krunt's to be thrown towards the walls. Krunt's, after witnessing the strength of the lightning bolt, realizes that even after absorbing the shark, he is still no match for this monster, so he yells for it to run to him and use a dick so that Krunt's can absorb it too. Everyone tells him not to go, but the guy knows he has a duty to fulfill. He approaches Krunt's, ready to take a dick. Krunt's is so scared of dying that he yells at the little shit to do it already. It is at this moment that the loser feels really bad for him, because he knows that this guy was a good person deep down, so he begs the lightning to save him, because he is a good person, but Krunt's tells him to transform quickly, and then threatens to kill the loser first. This was enough to enrage him, who uses his magic to wrap ropes around Krunt's neck. He pushes me back and jumps to the side of the group, saying that he will never support him for hurting all these people, but this makes Krunt's furious and he is very fast. He tires him very easily and grabs his face, and when he was in a hurry to deliver a powerful punch that would kill him, the lightning simply stops him, telling him only to stop, and that's enough to make Krunt's antibodies obey his order. And the ray is so cool that, after doing this, he goes to the loser and asks him why he begged him to save his life. And the confused loser apologizes, but the ray says that they are friends and that he might as well apologize, so he can talk better and decide to end the fight first. He raises his hand and suddenly all the drops of blood in the room start spinning around his head. This shocks everyone, especially Regis, who comments that only a superior noble could do this kind of magic. Krunz tries to dodge the blood that splashes around him, but he realizes that if this continues, he will end up losing, so he decides to run towards the lightning, but the lightning is already ready to use its magic, and using all the blood in the area he manages to completely destroy Krunz, erasing him completely from existence. Thus the battle ends, and everyone finally returns home, their M21 and Taku are treated, and Frank apologizes for having released his powers, even though he had promised he would never do it again, but the lightning says that it trusts him, and knows that if he broke the promise, it means he had no other choice. Frank is delighted to learn that his master trusts him so much. After that, after breakfast, M21 overhears Taku and the other guy talking about how they want to leave the syndicate and pretend they're dead and how they have nowhere else to go. M21 hears this and goes to Frank and bows down before him, begging him to shelter these two, otherwise the syndicate will find them and kill them. Frank smiles at him and he tells him that he doesn't need to beg for anything since this is his house too and of course they can stay in this house, saying that he'll love having two more security guards at his school.